Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the first ever Pays Projects podcast. My name is Peyton. I am a disabled fiber artist, and I have gotten a lot accomplished this month. First, let's start with this pile of finished objects, and this isn't even everything. Um, I'm going to start with socks. So I have this sock, and then this one. These are socks I made on my circular sock machine. I have a Dean and Bean sock machine. I absolutely love it. This one fits me pretty perfectly. I made it for me. I actually hand dyed this yarn as well. And then this one was a bit of a failure. It is way too big. You can see it goes off the sock blocker by quite a bit, but Thankfully, it fits my dad, so he is able to wear them, and I also hand dyed this yarn. Hand dyeing yarn is something that I absolutely love doing, and I actually have a video up that I will link on my first time ever dyeing yarn. Next, let's look at the Alaska sweater. This is the Alaska sweater. It is by Camille Descoto. I finished it on Monday. It is now Wednesday and it is finally dry. It fits pretty perfectly. I will insert a picture here on what it looks like on me. I absolutely love it. The sleeves were pretty easy. You can see the trees. It took me a good 30 minutes per sleeve to do this color work motif, but it honestly wasn't bad at all. I just switched to 6 millimeter, 9 inch circulars for these that I got off of Etsy. And then, getting down to the bottom of the sweater, that took forever. I almost gave up honestly and I'm really glad that I didn't. I actually started this sweater over a year ago. It was July 31st, 2022 when I started it and I did not finish it until August, I think it was August 28th of 2023. I am honestly really glad that I put it down because I would have not have finished it had I continued when I started because of how hard the color work was. But thankfully, I have done several color work projects in between, and that helped a ton with my confidence. Color work is something that's a little scary, I'm not going to lie, especially when you have to catch your floats. There were sometimes 20 to 23 stitches in between color change and I was having to catch my floats every five to six stitches so that it would continue along nicely and that was the hardest part once I got to closer down at the bottom it became a lot easier and this is what the inside of the sweater looks like it's kind of cool you can kind of see outlines of the trees here and then the inside of the sleeve looks like this I'm honestly pretty proud of how this turned out I did make adjustments to the neckline I wanted to do a short row neckline instead of starting it flat and then joining that way I could do the collar first because I hate doing finishing work so I knew if I could start with the collar that I would finish it well quicker and then I ended up taking over a year to finish but that's okay. 
um, all of the adjustments that I made for both the collar and the sleeves are in my Ravelry project page, which I will link below. The yarn for this is Heiko Simplicity Spray is the main color in 671, if I remember correctly. And then this gorgeous contrast color is by Leading Men Fiber Arts and Dramaturg and Vengeance, if I remember correctly. Once again, I will link the yarn in the description below so you can find it there. And then I forgot to add this. I did add that these are hand dyed by me. But this one, I guess both of them are actually from Dyer Supplier, which is unfortunately no longer available. But I will link Wool to Die For, which is one of my favorite places to get bare yarn. Next up, I have the Lily Sleepwear set. This is the top. It is by At The Seams on Etsy, and I will link them in the description. And then I also have shorts that I made. This was also a project I started last summer right before I got my puppy. And then he came home, and I did not finish it, and I put it away because having a puppy is exhausting, and I did not get it out again until last week and I didn't work on them at all until this week. I am in love with this top. It fits really well. I did have to shorten the straps to fit how I wanted them to. Technically it's a pajama set but I think it's super cute for daytime wear as well so that is why I am wearing the top with my jean shorts. And then I will probably style these shorts with a white shirt or even with the um, top as a matching set. And then it has overlapping seams for the shorts that I decided to tack closed on the sides so that it was a little less revealing. With it untacked, you could see a little higher than I was comfortable with. So my mom helped me pin it where I could tack it and it be closed to the amount that I wanted it to be. I really like how it turned out. I will definitely make the top again. I probably won't make the shorts again because I like my shorts to be a little bit longer than these, but they will be great for days that are super hot. I live in the Midwest so we get really hot weather and it'll also be great for sleepwear if I do decide to wear them as pajama bottoms. Next I have the faucet tee by Devin Ventry. It is absolutely gorgeous. This was my first color work yoke sweater I've ever done my first time ever doing mosaic knitting and I am in love with how it turned out I did complete this sweater before I did my Alaska sweater and I decided to do that because the color work in these had nowhere where I needed to catch any floats so it was a quite a bit easier, even though there's a quite a bit more, it just made it simpler. And I'm really glad that I did it that way because it gave me practice with color work before I actually got into difficult color work. The yarn for this is Madeline Tosh. I do not know the names off the top of my head. I will pop it up on the screen as well as link it in the description so that you guys can find it. My dad actually got this yarn for me for Christmas last year, so it does have some sentimental value to it. The yarn is this dark purple gray and then a variegated with blues and purples and grays. 
it's beautiful and I love how it worked up the original pattern has more contrasting yarns but I decided that this would be perfect I did consider over dyeing the multicolored yarn to make it pop a little bit more against the gray but I just loved how it looked in the swatch so I kept it I have the Riviera tea or Riviera T, I'm not quite sure how it's pronounced, by For The Frills. This is very loosely based off of that pattern. I had this yarn in my stash and I was going to originally make a shawl out of it, but I decided that I wanted to do a tee because I knew I was never going to finish the shawl. I have issues with shawls. I love them. I love the concept of them. They just take so long when you're working as the rows increase. My favorite way to do shawls is start from one tip, increase down to the center, and then decrease to the next tip. But unfortunately, most shawl patterns are not written that way. So I found this tee on Ravelry and I really liked the way that the tee looked so I took some of the measurements like the stitch count and then the neckline shaping and then I made it my own which is what I typically do. I do not have any notes on how I changed it so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to share that. I think what I did was 11 rows her color and then I used the yellow as the trim and collar and I did add the collar the pattern does not originally come with a collar but I like how it looks better I think it looks more finished and then this was worked flat and then seamed so I hand sewed the shoulders and the little sleeve cuffs on and then I took my sewing machine and sewed the side seams up because I was not loving how it was looking with the yarn showing through when I was sewing it up so I found thread that matched the color of the bottom ribbing and sewed it up and it's pretty invisible you can't see the thread through so i'm really happy with that last finished item for today is this button up t-shirt it is the oversized button up t shirt by dressy talk patterns I did make it short sleeve. The original pattern is long sleeve and then I proceeded to mess up the sleeve and one of the first steps and not realize it until one of the last steps. So I just cut the sleeve off and made it short sleeve. And a little fun story about why there's green on there and then green on the back yoke. I once again started this project over a year ago I put it away because it was intimidating and I pulled it back out last week and I couldn't find a cuff and this was all the material I had I did not have any more of the screw material so I decided I was going to do green cuffs and then to tie it in I was going to do a green yoke in the back and green buttons and then I messed up the sleeve like I said a minute ago so, but I had already sewn the yoke together I had already attached everything together so I made some binding tape out of my green fabric and bound the sleeve edges and sewed on my green buttons and I'm honestly really happy and proud of how this turned out this had so many new techniques for me like the shoulder seams are sewn using the burrito method and 
I will link a video to that in the description. It is actually by Dressy Talk Patterns who wrote the pattern for this tee or I guess shirt technically. She has some really great in-depth tutorials on her YouTube channel on how she puts together her projects and they really helped when putting this together. So I will link those. I have two more finished objects for August to share with you. Fair warning, I am not feeling great. So my brain fog is pretty bad. I'm going to make it as quick as I can so it actually makes sense. First, I just finished these socks today. They are pretty magnificent. My boss asked me to crank them out for her. I have a circular sock machine. So I made these today and then I hand knit the cuff of it. The yarn I used is Lane's Du Nord Infinity Sock and it is 75% muesling free wool and 25% nylon. This is the label. It is a really nice yarn. I highly recommend you check it out. These will be taken up to my work tomorrow because they are sample socks and I'm glad that I have the means to make this big of a sock in a day. I obviously made a pair and the cool thing about this yarn is it has a break in it so you can get a perfect pair of matching striped socks which I think is pretty awesome. And then the next object I don't have with me, it is also one that I did as a sample. So I will pop it up on the screen. It is the Waterfall Shawl by Lori Harrison. It was my first Tunisian crochet project ever. I was going to do a video about it, but I did not like how the footage turned out. It was kind of grainy and just overall not great. But I did get some really cool pictures of the shawl. A couple of things to note is when you are meeting your gauge for the pattern, get your gauge before it is blocked. That way when you block it, it grows to the correct dimensions. I hit gauge with my swatch being blocked and so my shawl was definitely smaller than what it should have been. But it was also really cool because I was able to do a whole shawl in one skein of yarn. So if you're looking for a one skein project, you can do this shawl using one skein. You just have to hit your gauge with the fabric being blocked. And this pattern has not been released yet. It is going to be released this October if I remember correctly. It is part of a book. I was fortunate enough to make a sample for the shop because we will be doing a book signing and so that is that project. It was a lot of fun. I used Cascade Heritage Silk. I'm not quite sure the color but I will put that in the description below with all the other yarn and pattern links and I will link Lori's website so that you can check out more of her other amazing patterns. I do have a couple of her projects saved in my Ravelry before I even made this shawl so I'm excited to do those in the future as well. Also apologies if you hear my dogs in the background. I have my service dog in training, Poe, here, and then my service dog, Maddie, who is almost fully retired behind me. So, on to... I'm considering these unfinished objects because I haven't touched them in a while, but they're 
still occasionally being worked on and I will finish them here pretty soon as it starts to get cold. First, I have a really beautiful hot pink hat. This is Mars in Retrograde by Madeline Tosh. It is DK weight. And I actually work at a yarn shop. And when I was there, this yarn just kept calling to me every single shift I had. So I went for it and I absolutely love it. And with this hat, I am not following a pattern. I just made it up as I went. That is how I make most of my hats. Next, I have this hat. This is in Potion Yarns in their, if you give me one second, Dryad Sock. And the color is La Vie in Rose. If I can get it to focus which it's not going to because why would it it's all good it is a 80 10 10 superwash merino cashmere nylon blend and there is 430 yards per 100 grams it is such a beautiful color and it is so soft and i think i'm going to have enough left over at the end to make a pair of shorty socks on my circular sock machine which i am really excited about those are my favorite type of socks and then finally i have this hat that i'm making for a family friend she is going through some health trials right now so i've been making her a couple of hats and now that it's going to be cold soon i will get this finished first out of the three hats so that i can get a tour it is out of cascade 220 superwash spring green there we go and i also forgot to mention that this tea is also out of cascade 220 superwash fingering and i will list the colors in the description below now let's move oh we have one more unfinished object i have been making these sunburst squares and let me pull up who they are by real quick they are by crafty kate i will link the pattern in the description below because it is actually a free pattern and i think I'm going to make a cardigan out of these. I'm not really sure yet. I have probably less than 10 made already. <clears throat> Apologies. And so once I get more made up, I will lay it out and take measurements so that I know how many I need to make to make a cardigan. Alrighty, and finally, let's talk about my upcoming projects. I have a lot planned for September, and I know I'm probably not going to get everything I want to finished. So, my two main knitting projects are going to be the Wyeth Cardigan by Alicia Plummer. And here is the swatch that I've made for that. It is out of paint box yarns. It is their recycled cotton worsted and the color is Tea Dance. It is this beautiful baby pink color. I'm not gonna lie, it's not the softest yarn in the world. I got it a little over a year ago when it was on major sale and it was enough for a sweater's quantity, which is the main reason I got it. But it's not super soft. It's also not scratchy. It just, it's not the softest yarn I've worked with. And I still think it's going to make a really nice cardigan. I did soak the swatch in laundry detergent with a little bit of white vinegar to soften it up, which it did help quite a bit. 
So I'm glad that I have that plan and I will pop a picture of the pattern up on the screen if I haven't already. And then next I'm going to do the Amy Cardigan by Hoagie Locatelli. I have my notes on my phone right here. This is the swatch that I have done for that. I did both a 4 millimeter needle and a 4.5 millimeter needle. I'm going to go with the 4 millimeter. It's given me the closest stitch gauge. My row gauge is off a little bit, but I know how to adjust that. I've done that in many patterns because my row gauge is almost always off. And I'm a little nervous for this project because it'll be my first time doing a cardigan by Hoagie. And the construction is different than what I'm used to. So I'm excited to learn and I'm sure it'll turn out great. I'm probably going to cast that on tonight. And the yarn I'm using for it is Bamboo Pop by Universal Yarns. And the color is Sage. It is such a pretty color. I had actually gotten this for the Adventurous Cardigan by Hokey Locatelli but it is too fine of a yarn so I went with a sport weight pattern by her. This universal pop yarn is technically a DK weight but in my opinion it counts more for sport weight or very light DK weight. It is very soft though so that is a huge win. And then a couple of sewing patterns I'm going to try to accomplish this month is the Paper Bag Shorts by EK Sewing Patterns. I will pop it up on the screen here. It is super cute shorts that will be a great staple. I am also going to do the Clove Shirt by Studio Tabitha. The I will pop up a picture here. It is also a nice staple. I think it'll be great for a couple of linens and cotton fabric I have. And then some other things I'm going to make is the Yarvis V-neck top by Trama Pattern Studios. I love their patterns. I've made several things by them before and they have really great tutorials. And then I'm also going to do the Liston Smock Dress by Trama Pattern Studio. It is a nice long dress. I prefer my dresses to hit below my knees. It's what I feel most comfortable in and this one hits more tea length. I will make it out of some green cotton fabric I have that's a really nice forest green. So I can't wait to share that in an upcoming video. Or, I sorry, All Well Workshop. And they are the All Well Studio Pants. They are just a nice, simple, straight-legged pant that has an elastic waist. I actually have two feeding tubes in my abdomen, so having elastic waists on my pants is really the most comfortable. I can wear button pants for a little bit, but it does get uncomfortable because of where my tubes are placed. So being able to make some pants that are going to fit how I want them to and be the most comfortable is a huge deal for me. It's hard to find things that work for your body sometimes and when you do it's a huge win. So I'm excited to give these pants a try and they have some really great pockets on them. Pockets is a huge deal for me. I love pockets and it can be hard to find commercially made clothing that actually has good pockets. So I'm excited to explore those patterns. I apologize if this podcast was a little chaotic. Like I said at the beginning, this is my first ever. So 
if you stuck with it this long thank you so much for watching and if you like my videos please consider subscribing and comment any ideas in the comment section below have a great night everyone